Welcome to another Korge video tutorial where we cover scenes. Many games depend on scenes because uh, most of the time you won't be thrown into a game without a start or a menu screen which you can consider as one scene. And when you then load the first level and the whole contents of the screen change, you can easily do this by just loading another scene in the Korge engine. And without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Um, for this I downloaded the Korge Hello World template, which you can see here. For this example's sake, let's just remove all this stuff we got in here. As you can see, we configure the Korge instance with giving it parameters up here. So we have width, we have height, we have the background color. But actually, we don't need to do this in the constructor. We can also do it by providing a module. So to do this, we just introduce a singleton, which we will call our config module. And to just configure it with the same values that we passed in the constructor, we will just override the respective values here. The next thing we have to do is to tell the Korg instance not to be created with these explicit parameters, but with the config module we declared down below. So, and to get rid of this error, we have to remove these parentheses also. In a regular one scene Korg canvas, you would just use these parentheses to uh, declare your views, etc. But this will be handled by the scene classes now, as you will be able to see in a few minutes. Let's create two scenes. I will do this in uh, this file. Um, normally, you would rather get these declarations of the scene in separate files, but for the ease of this tutorial, we will just do it here. We need two classes inheriting from scene to be able to override this function. This function will be called when an instance of this scene will be made. So this is where we will uh, take our code for creating the views and uh, configuring the update loop, etc. We will just put a rectangle here. And to be able to see a scene transition, we will just do the same in the scene2 class. But this time we want a red rectangle. And uh, for the sake of your argument, let's just place it a bit to the right. And what I want to do is that when we click on one of the rectangles, the scene actually should switch to the other scene. So if you're in scene one, it should switch to scene two, and if we're in scene two, it should back uh, it should switch back to scene one. Let's introduce an on click listener for that. The scene container instance can be accessed in the scene init function, and with change two, we call the function which changes to scene two. This method actually takes some parameters, like uh, you can get uh, some injections here for dependencies, or you can choose a transition. Um, we will just use the one without any parameters this time. The scene we switch to is identified by its class and not by some kind of object because at the moment there is actually no scene object at all. This will be created during the runtime of the game. To be able to switch back, just we'll do this the same thing here. So let's just see what we got so far. We have our config module. We use this config module in the constructor of the Corgi instance. We have two scenes which inherit from scene and which override these scene init functions where the actual code for the viewing canvas is um, placed. 
given that we actually have these two scenes at the moment, we have to tell Corgi which scene should be loaded per default. And we can easily do this by just overriding the main scene property in the module. So, and let's see now what we got. As you can see, this will produce an error. It's here. It's telling us that um, we don't have constructors, blah, blah, blah. But the point is we declare the class of this main scene, but what's actually missing is that we have to tell Corgi how to actually construct an object of this class. To do this in a convenient way, Corgi offers uh, asynchronous injection. We can reach this here by using this function. And here we have to map the classes of the scenes to this async injection so that the main scene can actually be filled with an actual object. For this we type map prototype and define the classes. So let's repeat that again. This line says we have a main scene and we have the class of the main scene. And this async injector just tells us with the map prototype how an object, which you don't have till now, of scene one and scene two should be constructed. And when we try it, we can see that now the main scene is properly loaded and the switch to scene two is already working too. So this is scene one, which is also a main scene, and the on-click event listener just switches the scene to the next scene.